The Hobbit trilogy is kind of a mess, isn't it? I mean, the main message of the series just boils down to don't be a greedy asshole. And that's ultimately ruined by its director for being a greedy asshole. People, you know, regard it as being like a cash grab. But now that it's all over, I think it's pretty fair to say that the three film idea was the wrong move. You know, unless you're Jackson's bank account. The most inexplicable part about the Hobbit trilogy is that even with nine hours of screen time, you don't get to know many of the main characters, especially when it comes to the dwarves. This gets unintentionally hilarious at the end when Bilbo turns around to say goodbye to his friends. It's supposed to be like this big emotional moment and you're sitting in the audience like, um, who is, what's, what's his name again? Oh, oh, Dwalin. Dwalin, I know him. Now compare this to the end of The Return of the King. One by one, the members of the Fellowship come to see that Frodo's awake, and in the audience, you get to think back fondly on all the time you spent with them. But just look at how much work went into creating the costumes for these dwarves. I mean, this guy's got three beards. This one wears a hat. Seriously, you're gonna wear that hat into battle while everyone else gets a big ass helmet? But without any real scenes to develop their characters, all I know about them is they're either fat, ugly, or look like Jimmy Fallon. I mean, you're telling me we couldn't have a few more conversations between the dwarves and Bilbo to tell us a little about each one of them? Watch some of the behind the scenes stuff and it's hilarious what some of these actors say about their characters. Gloin is the banker of the group. I sort of look after the finances. Was that in the movie? Did I blink? I'm a thief, I steal things. I get us into a bit of trouble, actually. What? <sighs> At least Stephen Hunter's on the ball. I'm Bomber. He's a fat dwarf, basically. Just, you know, not a bit about the bush. Or take this dude. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't know he can't speak English. Many can only speak in the ancient dwarvish language. Why not have a lost in translation scene that endears him to the audience? Characters don't have to say much for us to like them. I am Groot. Hold on. This is, um, Raisin Bray. And if they wanted to really differentiate these characters, why not add a few scenes along the way for a few setups and payoffs? Nobody tosses a dwarf! Or at the very least, tell us what their relationships are. I mean, the audience isn't even told that Feely and Keely are Thorin's heirs until two hours into the second movie. One day you will be king and you will understand. Feely is the nephew of Thorin, so he's a young prince. Is that right? He is, must be right. We could have been grooming them for leadership in that time, making the fall of their house that much more tragic in the Battle of the Five Armies. I mean, it's not like they weren't already adding to the source material. <sighs> so why not add something character related? Yeesh. Instead, the dwarves are entirely interchangeable. 13 dwarves is one of the reasons why I dreaded the Hobbit. Just check out this scene from the Battle of the Five Armies. It's actually a really good scene that shows how mad Thorin has become. I am your king! You will always my king. But why is Dwal in there? I mean, up until this point, the trilogy hasn't shown us anything that suggests that Thorin has a closer bond with Dwalin than he does with the other dwarves. So who should have been there? The answer is Balin. Of the dwarves, Thorin has the most interaction with Balin throughout the first two movies, but then for some reason has almost no screen time with him in the finale. It's two movies of setup with no payoff. I mean, what the bombadil? To prove this, let's play the best friends game. Contestant number one is Dwalin something. He's a hot-headed dwarf who hates being touched. Contestant number two is Balin something. This Gandalf wannabe and future dead king has a surprisingly odd hatred of mustaches. Let's see who Thorin's BFF really is. Dwalin. Dwalin helps pull Thorin to safety. This is the first interaction they've had in the movie and it is never talked about again afterwards. This way. How do we know he won't betray us? Don't. This is the first time they've had a conversation. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Balin. Balin is the only other dwarf character in the prologue with Thorin, showing the length of their friendship. At Bilbo's house, Thorin hears Balin's counsel away from the rest of the dwarves on whether or not he should try to reclaim Erebor. Bilbo's contract is signed by Thorin and witnessed by Balin, suggesting he is the clear number two of the group. When the company breaks for the night, Balin tells us Thorin's backstory and about how much he respects him as a leader. There is one who I could follow. There is one.
At the strategy sesh with Elrond, Balin is the only dwarf with Thorin. Balin, you know these paths lead on. When they reach the Misty Mountains, Thorin discusses strategy with Balin. After Thorin refuses to make a deal with Thranduil, he immediately seeks Balin's counsel on the matter. I told him he could go Ishkakve on Dorgnol. Thorin lets Balin organize the barge with Bard, showing that he trusts him with important matters. When the door to Erebor won't open, Thorin goes immediately to Balin for answers. When the door is finally opened, Balin is standing next to Thorin. This kind of visual metaphor suggests that he is the closest to Thorin. Notice that Dwalin is on the other side. Balin is like the, the consigliere, the um, advisor. My point here is that even the most well-drawn characters of the bunch, Dwalin and Balin, are treated as interchangeable in the script. Thorin saying, Kill her before I kill you. To Balin would have been way more impactful because we've seen Balin saying things like, There is one I could call king. The film takes all this time to set up a student-mentor relationship and then offers no payoff to the story. So like, what the fuck happened? Did someone just make a typo in the script? Dwalin? I'm sure Peter just meant Dwalin. And this isn't even the first time this happens. Here's another one. The dwarves are captured by elves and there's a little gag where the elves are searching Feely for weapons and it's revealed he's got about a dozen hidden daggers. So logically we'd think there'd be a scene later when carrying a bunch of extra blades would come into play. Like probably the first thing he did when he got to Erebor was stock up on daggers, right? I'm sure that would have come in handy at least once. Or this scene, where Bilbo tries to leave the company, but Boffer stops him. Now thus far, the only interaction we've had between them is Boffer giving him a dirty cloth for a handkerchief. This is good stuff, though. They have something in common, a love of home, You're homesick. I understand. and something contrasting. Bilbo is cleanly, while Boffer's a slob. But this is their first real conversation, just the two of them. And it's also a pretty good one. So why not have a payoff to this scene somewhere down the line? Maybe one where Boffer has doubts about staying with the company and Bilbo has to encourage him. You know, instead of them just never saying two words to each other for the rest of the movie. Yeesh. Now I get it that having 13 dwarves all with similar sounding names was just a running joke when Tolkien wrote the book back in the 30s. It was just something that made the whole adventure feel whimsical. And if the movie was two hours long, then having them perpetually in the background wouldn't be a problem, and we could just focus on Bilbo and Thorin. But if you're going to change a fairy tale into an epic trilogy adventure, and then expect me to care when we're saying goodbye, then you have to at least explain to me who's there. There are just so many missed opportunities opportunities for character moments that you can only really assume that the filmmakers themselves don't care about growing these characters. So what do they care about? <laughs> that does it for part one. Make sure to subscribe to the Sage Rance channel because tomorrow I'll be talking about how Peter Jackson forgot that action scenes are supposed to be exciting. But first, time for a little bonus stupidity. I am not running from anyone. Be still new. Wait, what? You've been running from everyone this entire movie.